So you want to learn how to set up a plane, do you? Well, I've got some good news because I have got plenty to choose from. My workshop actually backs onto Moron Airport in Spain, which is actually named after me. And the best thing about living in Spain is that it is always, always so... It's always, always so lovely and warm here. You would... You would not... No, no, no. All right. It's actually really cold. This is my last ditch attempt at trying to keep some warmth in here. It's not working very well. Anyway, I guess we'll have to settle for setting up one of these hand planes instead. So in this video, you're going to learn the anatomy of a hand plane. You're going to learn how to set up the hand plane. And I'm also going to give you a few teasers in how to use it effectively as well. However, I'll be doing a follow up video to this in which I explain that in much more depth. There'll be a link to that in the description below. Now, before we get stuck into anything, this video assumes that your plane is already sharp. If you've got the equivalent of a spade mounted in this, it's not going to cut, is it? So make sure it's sharp. And if you need a bit of help with that, I've already done a video. There'll be a link up here. There'll be a link in the description. Take a look at that because it will teach you how to put a camber on the blade and obviously how to get a razor sharp edge as well. All right, so anatomy of a plane. To start with, we have got this bit of metal on top, which is referred to as the lever cap. It is a cap of metal with a lever on it, which clamps everything down below. Now, bear in mind that not all planes have a lever on them. Some of them come with a screw cap to clamp everything down. You might refer to that as a screw cap instead. I don't know. Most planes, though, have what's called a lever cap, and it works on a cam action like that, which locks everything in place. If we then remove that, we have the blade assembly. Now, I call it a blade assembly because there's two parts here. We've got the bit of metal on top, and we've got the bit of metal on the bottom. The bit of metal on the top is called the chip breaker, which is sometimes confusingly referred to as a cap iron, not to be confused with a lever cap. This one's a cap and it's made of iron. This one's a cap and it's got a lever on it. I don't know. Most people these days just tend to refer to them as chip breakers though, which is quite convenient. Below that, we have got the frog, which has a couple of adjustments on it, which we'll go through later on in the video. But for now, those components are all you need to know. We've got the lever cap, we've got the chip breaker slash cap iron, we've got the blade, and we've got the frog. Now, keep in mind, everything I've explained so far is the anatomy of just a normal bench plane. If we take a look at this low angle jack plane here, there's a couple of things that are missing from it. Firstly, we have got a screw cap rather than a lever cap, so that's one thing. We have only got a blade in here. There is no chip breaker on this, and that's because it is a bevel up plane. Don't worry, we'll talk a little bit about that later. And secondly, it is lacking a frog. The blade just rests and slides directly on the casting of the plane. This is much the same as block planes that often come with a screw cap, but no chip breaker, or even shoulder planes that come with no chip breaker but still have this screw cap on them to tighten it all down. Don't get too caught up in the anatomy of things because it does vary on the plane you get or even the brand you get. At the end of the day, what matters is you know the basic principles behind setting up a plane. That way it doesn't matter what the plane does have or what the plane doesn't have. As long as you know these principles, you'll be able to set up any plane that's handed to you. So that's what the rest of the video is going to be focused on. So firstly, I'm going to separate the chip breaker from the blade. And for this, we have got this lovely plane screwdriver here. I'll put a link to it in the description because I'm always asked about it. And we're going to turn the screw about half a turn or so. A little bit of advice for you here. Don't take that screw all the way out. Just loosen it enough so you can slide the chip breaker around because as you'll see later in the process, it makes it so much easier to reassemble this thing. So when it's loosened enough, flip the blade back over, slide the chip breaker back, spin it round to 90 degrees, slide it forward, and then you're gonna pull the screw through this hole here. So like that, and then up. This is just good practice for disassembling a chip breaker because it prevents you from damaging the edge. Turn it 90 degrees, slide it forward, lift it up. And as you can see, we have still got the screw in the bottom of the chip breaker. And this obviously at this point, you would do all of your sharpening while the blade is on its own. Let's get it reassembled now. Now by far, one of the most common problems people have when setting up planes is they put the blade in upside down. If we take a quick look at the frog of a plane, this frog is mounted at 45 degrees to the sole of the plane. So that means if you put the blade in beveled down, the shaving travels up a 45 degree slope because it's traveling up the flat of the blade. If you flip it over, the shaving has now got to travel up a 45 degree slope plus the angle of the bevel you've put on the end, in this case 30 degrees. So it's now got to travel up a 75 degree slope. 
which I'll say now a shaving can do. It can travel up a 75 degree slope. And in fact, there can be advantages to doing that. But in the case of a standard bench plane like this, where the frog is at 45 degrees, the blade must be mounted in there, beveled down, the bevel on the bottom. A little tip I used to share about this is that the manufacturers wouldn't put their logo on the bottom of the blade. That would just be silly. Until I realized that some manufacturers like to stamp their name on both sides of the blade or some not even at all. Anyway, now you know which way the blade goes up, you are one step ahead of 95% of the rest of the beginners out there who are still trying to figure out why their plane won't cut. I can guarantee you, most of the time, that is the reason why. Now moving on, to reassemble the plane, we are going to be doing the exact reverse of what we did before. Now obviously we've still got the screw in the chip breaker here, and this is why it's worth keeping it in because if you accidentally remove it, you've got to then remember which side of the chip breaker it went in and like, oh, it doesn't assemble like that. And if it goes in the bottom, then that's just a bit weird, isn't it? Why would the screw be on the bottom? Spoiler alert, the screw does go on the bottom of the chip breaker. And so by keeping it in there, if you can, it just gives you one less thing to worry about. So that screw is going on the bottom. The bevel of the blade is on the bottom and they're gonna to come together like this. If you take a look at the end, it basically creates a knife point between the two edges. So doing the reverse of what we did before, we're gonna turn the chip breaker 90 degrees. You're gonna drop the screw through the hole there, slide it back, spin it round, and then start sliding it up towards the edge of the blade. Now, as with most things surrounding sharp objects in the woodworking community, there is a lot of debate about how close you should set this chip breaker to the edge of the blade. Some people say that by setting it close, it improves the quality of the cut you get from the plane. Some people say that if you bring it back, then it, I don't know, there's, there's some sort of argument for both sides and I'm not here to try and dispute which one's best or what. The only thing I can absolutely vouch for is this. If you set the chip breaker too close to the edge of the blade, there is a much higher chance that you'll experience clogging between the two. Shavings will start forcing their way between the blade and the chip breaker and as a result, the entire mouth of your plane gets clogged. The only way to fix it is by disassembling everything, taking the chip breaker off the blade, wiping all the shavings out and then reassembling it and resetting up the plane. And you run a much higher risk of this happening if you have a cheap plane with a poor mating surface between the chip breaker and the blade. So as a result, lots of videos around plane restoration will teach you to flatten the back of the chip breaker to improve the mating surface thus preventing clogging from happening. If you want to learn a little bit more about plane restoration, take a look at my video where I took an Amazon Basics plane and made it perform exactly the same as a Lee Nielsen, which is 10 times the price. Now for me, because I know I've got a good fit between the blade and the chip breaker, I like to slide it up so it's within a millimeter or so of the edge. Make sure it's sitting there nice and evenly, slightly tighten it up by hand, being careful not to let it slip, and then take your screwdriver and really snug it up. And that is how you correctly disassemble and reassemble the blade assembly. So just to summarize, the bevel goes on the bottom of the blade, the screw goes on the bottom of the chip breaker, the logo goes on the top of the blade for, for the most part. <laughs> there is one exception to that, however. I kind of teased this earlier, but low angle planes or otherwise known as bevel up planes are called that because the blade needs to go in bevel up. Usually the beds on these are ground at 12 degrees to the base of the plane, hence why they're called low angle planes. Whereas on the standard bench plane, which we've already talked about, the blade is mounted at 45 degrees. The reason the blade needs to go bevel up in low angle planes is because if you put it with a bevel down, the angle of the bed is so low that you can't actually get the tip of the blade to engage in the wood. It needs to go in this way up so the tip can actually do some cutting. So the next step, get this blade assembly in the plane. Now, despite everything we've said so far, it's still very easy to get this stage wrong and put the blade in upside down. I'm convinced it's always that screw that catches people out. They see that and think, oh, it needs to be on top because it needs to be accessible. No, this screw needs to go into this little pocket on the frog here, that little bit there. To make this stage a little bit easier for myself, I like to elevate the plane so the frog is level with gravity. This makes it slightly less fumbly to get the blade in there. If you lift it up, it's just nice and easy to see what you're doing and you haven't got to worry about any external forces. So that's gonna rest on the frog. Give it a wiggle until you feel it lock. You're looking for the blade to sit on this tab here. You can confirm that it's sitting correctly by moving the lateral adjuster and you should see the blade start skewing. You could also wind the thrust wheel, which is underneath the blade, to see if the blade is moving in and out. If both those adjustments are happening, you're all good. Next, we get the lever cap, slide that over the screw, and then lock down the cam. That should be all that is necessary to lock down the plane. You shouldn't need to be messing around with this screw to lock or unlock the plane at all. All the locking action should be happening up here on the lever cap or the screw cap, whatever it happens to be. The only function this serves is if you want to increase the tension in which everything is locked under. For example, if I wanted to have it under slightly more tension, 
I could turn that maybe half a turn and then oh, nice and snug. But then the trade off of that is that all of these adjustments under here are significantly tighter than what they were before. So the advantage to setting this screw and leaving it is that you can tune that tension to exactly where you want it to be and then you just leave it. Everything is done up here otherwise. Annoyingly, there are some brands where there literally isn't enough movement in that lever cap to lower the cap enough to slide off the screw at the bottom, in which case you do have to loosen the screw and adjust it every single time. Likewise, with some screw caps, sometimes there just isn't enough thread to retract enough to slide over the screw at the bottom. So sometimes you just can't help it. You do need to adjust that bottom screw, but if you can help it, try to avoid it. And so with that, we've got the plane assembled correctly and we're ready to start setting it up to produce some fine shavings. Now with this next stage, do not be disheartened if it sounds a little bit involved or a little bit confusing. There is a lot of things that go into this explaining it the first time round, but the basic principle behind it is we're bringing the blade out, we're gonna get it straight, we're gonna bring it back in, and then we're gonna bring it out again out, in, out. That's all there is to this next stage. Anything around that is just learning how to adjust the mechanisms and things. Out, in, out. That's all it is. Now within a plane, you have got two main adjustments for the blade. The first one is this, which is called the thrust wheel. Turning this clockwise brings the blade out. Turning it anti-clockwise brings the blade back. Now bear in mind that these rotational directions refer to looking at the plane from the back as you are now. If you're looking at it from the front, they then get reversed. Anti-clockwise starts bringing the blade out, clockwise starts bringing it back. In addition to the thrust wheel, which is under here, you have got this, which is the lateral adjuster. If you push that side to side, it will start skewing the blade in the opposite direction. You'll find that your muscle memory will very quickly learn which way you need to spin that thrust wheel, depending on if you want to bring it out or in, or if you're looking at it from the front or the back. But don't be surprised if it's a little bit confusing to begin with, because it is in most cases. So to begin setting up this plane, we're going to look at it from toe to heel. Toe meaning the front of the plane, heel meaning the back of the plane. And you're going to sight down the sole at a shallow angle like this. You'll see the more acute you make it, the more reflective it gets. And for this reason, it's really beneficial to have a nice light background. And hopefully you can just about see the mouth opening there. At this point, we're going to begin the first adjustment of setting up a plane, which is bringing the blade out. So I'm going to turn the thrust wheel anti-clockwise as I'm looking at it now. And what you'll see is a little shadow appearing. That is the blade coming out the bottom of the plane. Now, as you can probably see, the blade is higher on the right hand side than it is on the left hand side. So at this point, we need to get the lateral adjuster and we need to push it very slightly towards the high side. And you'll see the blade begins to level out. Get it as close as you can around about there for me. And what we're looking for here is for both the corners of the blade to disappear into the sole of the plane at exactly the same time. If you followed my sharpening tutorial, you'll know that we've got a very subtle camber on this blade, which is a small bump in it. So looking for the middle to disappear at the same time as the corners is impractical. We're looking for the two corners to disappear at the same time. So now we're going to start winding the blade clockwise. You'll feel the thrust will go loose temporarily and then engage. This looseness in the thread is called backlash, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. It's very important but I'm going to start turning the wheel clockwise now to bring the blade back and we're looking for both corners to disappear. Now what's important about this is as the blade gets closer to the sole of the plane, any discrepancies in the angle of the blade is going to become more apparent. It's much harder to see a discrepancy if the blade is all the way out here. It's much more apparent when it's nice and close to the sole. So you might find you need to make small adjustments as you go. It's looking pretty good to me through the camera screen, so I'm going to continue bringing it back. Keep going until it pretty much disappears. At which point, just give it another quarter of a turn to make sure the blade is not sticking out at all. Now, obviously, this stage of the plane setup already requires a rather high level of visual acuity, which uh, is obviously a benefit to being in your mid-twenties. One thing you've got to bear in mind with this is this plane is going to be set up to take off a thousandth of an inch shaving or a couple hundredths of a millimetre. That means that if this blade is off by a couple hundredths of a millimetre, that's going to show in the shaving. So really, we need to get this angle accurate to within a hundredth of a millimetre. My eyes can do that. If yours can't, or you just want a more tangible method of measuring that while setting it up, an easy way to do so is with a block of wood. With this small offcut, we're going to get the corner of it and we're going to run it down the sole of the plane. Be very careful with this because we're not looking to create a mandolin out of this tool. It's for shaving wood, not fingers. So run the corner along the blade like this while working along. And what you should find is it starts cutting in the middle and then tapers off. Oh no. Oh no, my eyesight. My eyesight's degrading. I'm going to make a small adjustment here and pretend that never happened. Let's try again. Nothing, nothing. Cut and then nothing. Whew, man, is this what it's like to be old? Whew, terrifying stuff. 
Now already we have done two parts of the plane setup process. We've brought the blade out, we got it straight, and we've brought it back in, making sure that both the corners disappear at the same time. When you bring the blade in, make sure the blade is properly in. I'm not talking miles or anything like that. Just make sure that the blade is in enough so that if you were to push it over the top of a piece of wood, it wouldn't cut. My advice would be to look for both corners to disappear at the same time and then just give it another half turn and that should be more than enough. So at this point, we're gonna start the final process of setting up a plane, which is bringing the blade out to its final depth of cut. To do that, you're gonna start spinning the wheel clockwise as you're looking at it from behind. And what you'll feel is that thread will go loose and then it will engage. This once again is that backlash I was talking about earlier and it is very, very important you understand what it is why it happens and how you need to work with it. Because getting pretty shavings fly out from this thing is only half the story. If you don't understand backlash, your success with setting up and using a plane is gonna be severely affected. In fact, backlash isn't something that only happens in planes and when the government does something stupid. It's a concept that can be applied to all sorts of equipment, be it machines, power tools, other hand tools around the workshop make sure to stick around for it. So now that I've spun the thrust wheel clockwise and I can feel it is engaged in the thread, it's at this point the adjustment has started. So what I'm gonna do is start pushing it along the piece of wood, all the while making very, very small turns with the thrust wheel as I go. Make sure to turn it as you push. Don't start, turn, start, turn, because as soon as you feel it bite, you'll know where you're at. Right about there, there we go. So we've just taken a little tiny tiny little shaving from it there and so that I know I'm in the ballpark. So it's very important at this stage to be patient. Bear in mind that a plane's job is to take high points off the piece of wood. And so given the fact it's taken off this tiny little shaving, it shows that this shaving was once a high point. However, what many beginners will do is they'll look at this shaving and think, well, where's the rest of it? And what they'll do is they'll start bringing the blade out more and more, hoping to get that one long continuous shaving, which may happen, but by the time you've done that, your blade is set too deep. What you actually want to do at this point is be patient. Take four or five more shavings and let the plane take off those high points. And what you should find is the shavings will eventually start getting longer and longer as that piece gets flatter. So let's try again for another pass. Look, that's already started taking off a slightly longer shaving. Let's keep going. So I'm not doing an adjustment yet. I'm just seeing if it's gonna take off any more high points. Although it's looking like we're getting a pretty consistent shaving all the way along it. It's just very, very stringy. It's very nice to handle, but we could probably take it out a little bit deeper. And so when you're taking shavings as wispy as that, you wanna be making very, very small adjustments of the plane. Literally something like that. Barely anything. Let's see what difference that makes. There we go, look at that. I barely even turned that thrust wheel and look at the difference in these. I'm gonna stick with this setting and see what we can get. Here we go. That is a very, very well set up plane. I've just given it one tiny turn again and we are pretty much at the point where I would leave it. Look at that. Amazing, lovely stuff. But what happens if you've accidentally bought the blade out a little bit too much and you're producing veneers rather than thin shavings like this? Well, it's at this point we can start talking about what backlash is and how you need to work with it. Backlash, at least in the context of planes, is caused by this little tab which you see in the slot of the chip breaker here. If I just remove the blade, this little tab is part of the yoke, which is what pushes the blade in and out as you spin the thrust wheel. If I just put the blade back on, backlash is caused by this movement here. You see it's able to move ever so slightly. In fact, if I spin the thrust wheel, you'll see that the tab is able to move in there without shifting the blade at all. And when you experience looseness in the thread of the thrust wheel, it's simply this tab moving from pushing on the front of the chip breaker to pushing on the back. Oh no, so the blade wobbles a little bit on a piece of metal, so what? Let me show you. When people realize that they're cutting a little bit too deep, ah, the first thing they'll do is think, oh, well, all I need to do is just bring the blade back a little bit and then they'll plane again. The reason it's bad to retract the blade and then take a shaving is because the blade is no longer supported from behind with the yoke. And the reason for that is because of backlash. Let's go back to our naked plane to show what's happening under the hood. So as we bring the blade out, we experience a shaving that is too heavy. Now, obviously this is a problem because the shaving is too heavy, but as for the blade itself, it's still locked down and supported nice and securely. The shaving is gonna come in through the mouth and it's gonna push on the front of the blade, therefore trying to push the blade back, which isn't going anywhere. Now, let's retract the blade 
to reduce the depth of cut and try the same thing. The shaving comes through, it pushes on the front of the blade. We have got movement. Now you might not experience the depth of cut being knocked out straight away because at the end of the day, it's all locked down under your lever cap. But after multiple successive shavings, the protrusion of the blade will be changing. And in fact, the skew of the blade might even be changing as well. And so it's for this reason that every single time you set up the plane, make sure the blade is in the advanced position so that it's fully supported from behind. In practice, what that looks like is this. Oh no, I've set up too heavy of a shaving. Yeah. Right, well, what I need to do is remember the principles that Matt told me. Bring the blade out, bring the blade in, then bring it out. Well, I've already done the first one because the blade is already out too much. So the remaining two I need to do are, right, I need to bring it all the way back in so the blade is not sticking out at all. Let's just quickly test that, yep. And then we're gonna start bringing the blade out again to its final depth of cut. So making small adjustments as we go. And then before you know it, we are taking a lovely fine shaving all the way along beautiful. That is why it is so important to understand what backlash is, what causes it, and how you need to work with it, because it is very easy to accidentally take off too much material through impatience or inexperience when setting up a plane. But by thinking simply retracting the blade and taking another shaving will fix your issues, you're going to run into some more issues by doing so. Anyway, that's how you set up a plane. I do hope you found the video useful. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to take a look at the follow-up video below in which I'll be teaching you how to plane correctly. I'll see you there.